Motorcycles are used by a lot of people because of their fair amount of price and the benefit they get in return from motorcycles, as it is a decent vehicle that is both efficient and fast. But the problem with motorcycles these days is that it isn't too safe, as motorcycles do not offer the same amount of protection as two cars would have. Motorcycles are 37 times more likely to be in a fatal crash than cars do, and the accidents were not always the motorcycle driver's fault, and yet, motorcycles are still more vulnerable to these fatal crashes. Since the brain is the most important organ in the human body, it needs to be protected all the time. The potential risks of not wearing a helmet would include severe brain injury, permanent neck injuries, and death. The solution is not to avoid these accidents, but rather to avoid fatal injuries inflicted on the riders. And as a result, helmets were the answer. Helmets are very beneficial and most or not, every country strictly encouraged the use of helmets by law and there is a good reason for it. Over 800 deaths in the US every year could have been saved if the use of helmets were present for the driver. Every helmet has the use of composite materials where it has its own reinforcement compartment and its own matrix which works together to form the protection layers for the helmet. The composite materials used are very efficient in distributing kinetic energy from impacts amongst other parts of the helmet and in return protect the wearer. And as the general solution, helmets will greatly reduce the chance of death or any head related injury by a lot as it protects the most vital organ in the human body, which is the brain. Every motorcycle helmet uses composite materials in order to distribute the kinetic energy from outside impacts to parts of the motorcycle helmet. First, we have the outer shell, which is the shell that is visible by the user and it is meant to avoid any object from breaking or piercing through the helmet and into the person's head. And second of all, it is used to equally distribute the momentum given from outside forces and into the second protection layer. A sample material which would be very useful for this layer of the helmet would be a carbon fiber as it is very durable and lightweight, which would be excellent for the outer shell. And then there is the second layer, or simply the protection layer, which is what absorbs most of the kinetic energy or momentum from outside impacts and its function is to absorb as much energy as it can. The material used for the protection layer is a thick piece of polystyrene, which is inserted under the outer shell, and apart from its great energy protection, it also gives good noise reduction for the wearer to use. The way these two materials work as a composite material is fairly simple. We have the carbon fiber, which works as the reinforcement, and polystyrene, which is the matrix that shapes the outer shell giving it its flexibility while the carbon fiber gives it the strength that it needs. Now we can discuss about the physical and chemical properties as well as the elemental compounds as they are vital in the characteristics that makes up for the helmet. First we can talk about polystyrene which is the material used for the protection layer and its chemical and physical properties as to why it is widely used in motorcycle helmets. The elemental compound for polystyrene is simple and easy to find. Polystyrene is a vinyl polymer which is, which is structure is made up of chains of hydrogen and carbon which are the simplest form of organic elements combination as they are plentiful. As for its physical properties, polystyrene is an aromatic polymer which is made from monomer styrene. Polystyrene can be either solid or foam. Most polystyrene is clear, hard, and brittle. Types of polystyrene such as styrofoam is very lightweight and is also a good insulator for electricity. Polystyrene is also thermoplastic which means it, that it is solid at room temperature but is liquid once heated to its melting point of 100 degrees celsius or more. As for its chemical properties, polystyrene structure has a long chain of its compound elements, hydrocarbon where alternating carbons are attached to phenyl groups. Since the molecules are long hydrocarbon chains that contain thousands of atoms, polystyrene has a very large attractive force in between the molecules. 
which means to say that even though polystyrene is easy to snap, it is very difficult to pull it apart or to crush it from one side as its attractive force is very large. Now secondly, we can talk about carbon fiber reinforced plastic. As a general information, carbon fiber reinforced plastic is a very strong, durable, and light material that can be useful for motorcycle helmets. Carbon fiber reinforced plastic is a combination of carbon fiber and a plastic which is more often epoxy. The properties of carbon fiber are like so in the picture. It is very strong, very durable, light, stiff, a low density, and a very high resistance. Carbon fiber is only made up from carbon as its element, and carbon fiber has a covalent bond where the carbon atoms are bonded together and it consists of fibers which is around 5 to 10 micrometers in diameter. The chemical structure of carbon fiber is a hive of carbons bonded with each other creating crystals that are parallelly, parallelly aligned with each other and the crystal alignment gives it its strength. When carbon fiber reinforced plastic and polystyrene works together as a composite material for creating motorcycle helmets, it has some benefits that may amuse most of its customers by bragging its properties and its durability. The first benefit this type of helmet may offer is that it is very light, yet it is also very strong. And this is a very big benefit for a lot of motorcycle drivers since they do not only look for helmets strengths but also their weight. For these drivers, it might sound like the perfect helmet where it is stronger than steel yet lighter than the average motorcycle helmet. Slightness also do not cause any neck fatigue like normal helmets do from their weight. The second benefit from these kinds of helmet is that the carbon fiber distributes the momentum not only from the second layer of the polystyrene but also for its layer where it equally distributes the energy amongst its layer as a result it reduces the amount of impact force for the person's head. Though it may have some really good benefits, it also have their own limitations as to why carbon fiber helmets are not the perfect helmets that everybody uses. The first limitation for this helmet is that it comes at a very high price than average and that not everybody can afford which is why a lot of people prefer to go with the normal helmets that is easy to replace and to buy. The second limitation that when it comes to carbon fiber helmets is that even though it may be durable and can withstand extreme impacts, it may not be able to do it for a second time, meaning that minor or major impacts may damage the outer epoxy layer of the carbon fiber reinforced plastic and makes the helmet useless which can also be linked to its price as replacing it will be very expensive. One factor that may affect the successfulness of carbon fiber is the fact that even steel is not able to be as strong and durable as carbon fiber and that steel is not is also a lot heavier than carbon fiber which gives rider the best of both both worlds the significant factor both benefit the safety as well as the comfort of the helmet that can be used for the riders and in the future if the price of carbon fiber will ever go down it may be safe to say that carbon fiber fiber will, will replace every other material even kevlar for motorcycle helmets.